Hi there, this is Max with Family Piano Co. And today I'm gonna to talk about something real important. This is how to test and select the best piano for you from a piano store. Now for a pianist, their selection of a piano is extremely important because unlike other instrument types, most people are only gonna ever buy one piano. And for the most part, you're probably only gonna have one, two, pianos in your whole lifetime as a pianist. Um, so it's a real long-term you know, decision that you're making when you're at a piano store. Um, so there's quite a bit to know about how to select the right piano. Um, kind of what I'm going to get into, um, here are a couple assumptions that I'm making. One, you generally know what kind of piano that you want. You know, I'm not going to be talking so much about differences between brands and uprights. I'm not going to go too much into difference uh, different brands, different specific models. This is generally going to be, you know, a video that's going to help you make a final decision after you've already found some pianos that you really like. And this is going to be a careful analytical look at how to make sure that you're making a real good decision for you, the performer. Now, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is going to be most useful for intermediate players on up. Um, but you know, I hope to have quite a bit of good advice for beginners as well. I think a lot of this will be applicable to players of any skill level. Um, but to really get into it, there's a couple of main aspects of a piano that we want to you know, really identify what you like the most. Now, the two single most important aspects of choosing a piano um, is going to be how much you like the tone and how much you like the sense of touch, the touch response. Um, you know, both things are extremely important and you know, there's ways that you know a piano can be altered to kind of get it to exactly how you like it um, but in terms of selecting a piano in the piano store there's a limit to how much you know it can be adjusted and customized to exactly how you like it so you want to find something that's real close to what you want and you know with some voicing and extra work it can get to exactly how you like it um, but it needs to be pretty, pretty close. So the first big thing is going to be tone. And tone is very subjective. You know, every pianist has kind of in mind their own kind of favorite piano tone. Um, but for a lot of folks who are just picking out a piano, most of the time this is the beginning of your piano journey. Um, or maybe, you know, you started with a starting keyboard or like a beginner, you know, upright piano. And now you're starting to look, uh, you know, at what you want to have as your long-term instrument. So sense of tone, extremely important. In general, there's two extremes that we talk about. Um, there's warm pianos and there's bright pianos. Now I made a video on warm versus bright pianos that really gets into the detail. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of variation between warm and bright pianos and it's really a spectrum. Uh, so it's, you know, exactly what kind of tone do you like? Now, for example, this piano here, this Kawhi GL10, is a very warm instrument. Now, if you really love playing very lyrical pieces, um, if you love playing romantic music, um, you know, it, it really goes into does your style match this instrument? But the other aspect is going to be the versatility of the sound. And this is where, you know, it's very important that you don't only like your piano for one reason. You want to like your piano, um, you know, as an all around versatile instrument that, you know, encompasses all the kinds of music you want to play on it. So for example, you know, this is a very warm instrument, um, but one thing that a very warm instrument might not, you know, do enough for you would be clarity. Um, now, let's go ahead and give this a try here. Now, clarity is referring to how much can you hear, you know, different melodies going on in different parts of the keyboard in a clean, crisp way.
Now, one thing that I noticed when I was playing uh, is with a warmer piano, it's going to have less clarity, meaning in the left hand of what I just played, um, it's harder to make out the exact melody that was uh, you know, going on. It's a little cloudier. Everything kind of blurs together into one bigger you know, painting. And for a lot of folks, like that could be what you want. That could be you know, a perfect kind of piano for you. Um, but this is why one of the big points is you want to play multiple pieces of contrasting styles. So, you know, if you're, if you're a pianist and you like playing, you know, classical era music like Mozart, Beethoven, then you should also try playing, you know, some more modern music, um, whether that's going to be jazz, whether that's going to be just a more modern, you know, composer like Chopin or, you know, a romantic era composer. Um, going to Baroque era music. Um, you know, if you're a more modern player in general, then you're gonna wanna play different genres. So maybe you're playing, you know, a rock piano piece, and then maybe you're playing, you know, something, you know, softer. In general, you wanna capture different emotions um, and different kind of uh, d music that feels distinctly different from each other. You wanna play it on the piano, and you really want to you know, take note of how well does the instrument handle these different kinds of styles. Now, if you're a beginner, that's gonna be a little bit, uh, you know, harder to do because you probably haven't played a lot of different kinds of styles yet. Um, so essentially things that you can do as a beginner, you know, you can run simple scales on the piano. And a lot of this is going to be, as a beginner, um, identifying what kind of tone do I wanna have on the piano and a lot of this, it's very subjective, but we want to look ahead um, at where we want to be in the future while playing the piano and what kinds of music we ultimately want to play. Um, so if we have a warmer instrument like this and you're aspiring to play punchier rock music, you know, this kind of sound is very lush, it's very melty. Might not be the best choice for punchier rock music, Ideally, you might want to find a more versatile instrument that can handle, you know, a lot of different kinds of uh, genres, kinds of emotions. Now, here we are at a distinctly different kind of instrument. This is definitely going to be a brighter piano. Um, and so with different genres, you're going to really want to test out, you know, just a lot of different kinds of styles. instrument definitely has a crisper sound to it and a very different kind of sound quality overall. I mean this is a much older instrument. The GL10 I showed you was brand new and this is going on about a hundred years old. Um, but it's a good it's a good demonstration of the different kinds of sounds that you might encounter. Now when you begin to settle on a general kind of sound that you want your piano to have then it's time to get really analytical about the you know, exact pianos that are your top couple of favorites. So in terms of sound, what you're going to be looking for is you want to analyze both independently the three main regions of the piano, your lower range, your mid range, and your upper range. And what you're looking for is um, essentially, you know, how much do you like each individual range's sound, both, uh, you know, standing alone, and then also how do you like how they blend. So this is one thing that even beginners can, uh, you know, get a real good idea for. What I would suggest is playing a simple five note scale, just down in the bass here. Uh, first, I would start slow and just really listen to the sound of the bass notes. So we do have a really nice deep sound Know, quite a bit of resonance. Um, however, you can tell the strings are not quite so fresh. Um, you'd expect that on a piano this old. Um, but it's really important to keep you know, note of everything like that. I'd also say to play some deep octaves as you're going to play a lot of these. Um, so something along the lines of just you know, a C octave. And 
this has a really deep, very pleasant kind of sound. Um, but you really want to feel, one, is there enough power for you? And this is subjective, it's how much volume that you want, but also the deepness of tone and the resonance in the bass. <laughs> next aspect is going to be clarity of the sound and especially in the bass it can be pretty easy especially on an older instrument to get very blurry kinds of sounds as the strings get older the felts get you know less less like they were when they were brand new you know the felt is going to be you know harder it's you know going to be quite a bit less felt on it on an older piano um, but in general you want to listen to as you play a five note scale how well can you hear, you know, that do, re, mi, fa, so, you know, up and down? And if you play it faster, you know, does it become blurry and distinct? Um, this is all going to be important because if you're playing, you know, fast things in the bass, it could turn into a blur or it could have really good clarity. So let's see. To my ears, this is an instrument that when you play a single octave, has a really impressive deep bass sound. But when you play a running scale, it becomes very blurry and very hard to distinguish individual sounds. So if you're playing a piece where you, you know, have quite a bit going on in the bass, it kind of just becomes a deep so that's something you really want to look out for. The next is going to be your mid-range here, which this is a very important part of the piano because this is where the majority of your melodies are going to fall. So you're going to be listening both for how well can it project its tone um, and also the purity, clarity, beauty of the sound. Um, is it the exact quality that you want? Because this is where about 90% of your melodies are going to fall. sound overall. It's not a very wide tone, but it does project very nicely. Um, so then I would take the bass range and the mid range here and just play something very simple and just see how these ranges interact with each other. And is it in a way that you like and compare this with your other top favorites and see, you know, which is offering just a better balance here. <laughs> does offer you know, quite a bit of support um, you know to my ears there's still some lacking definition going on in the bass um, but let's go ahead and try this on another piano and we'll also talk about the top range so here we have another very different kind of instrument this time it's a Yamaha Grand um, but still we're gonna quickly do what we just did on that big old Weber upright and see how we like you know some simple bass chords mixed with uh, you know a simple mid-range melody This is a newer piano, it's not a brand new one, it's from the 1990s, but generally that means the strings are going to be almost like new, um, you know, very little wear. Pianos don't change very much in their first 30 years or so. Um, so it's close to a new piano, and generally that's going to mean that as pianos age, they're going to, their sound is going to alter in, you know, kind of a unique way. So that's one thing, an older piano will have a really unique kind of sound. Usually on a newer piano, the different areas of the keyboard are going to sound more similar because as pianos age, they age in a unique way and each area of the piano 
alters its sound in a unique way. So you get more differentiation of sound. Newer piano, less differentiation of sound, but generally is gonna blend a lot more like it's intended to. So the next range here is gonna be the high range, uh, the very high treble. And kind of the way to think about this is just like with uh, human hearing, we lose the extremes first as we age. With pianos, it's very similar. So the extreme ends of the piano are very, very telling about, you know, the overall sound quality. So, you know, what I'm gonna play here is just a simple five note scale and I'm listening for the tone. Now, some things to listen for is how tinny or beautiful is the tone. Um, it's very easy for these high notes to get, you know, pretty tinny. And sometimes that can be helped from voicing the instrument or regulation, which is gonna make sure the hammers hit you know, exactly right on the strike point of the strings to get the best sound. But, you know, all things equal, some pianos are just gonna have much better uh, higher ranges that you're gonna like a lot more. Um, and ideally, you're, you should like every part of your piano. very beautiful, very sparkly, and has quite a bit of tone to it, which is just fantastic. Um, now, other pianos can you know, sound pretty drastically different up top. Of course, it's also going to depend a lot on how does the top range interact with you know, the bass range, because most of the time you're going to be playing some bass chords as you're playing notes up here. And the bass is going to add quite a bit of stability to the sound up here. It's going to add a lot of support and you should basically the sounds up here they should be able to stand out quite a bit over the bass and the bass should really complement the sounds up top and you know they should blend together very well this instrument has a really nice blend of sounds going on um, and another thought here is you also want to make sure that the tones up top also have the right amount of volume that you want. It's very easy for these tones to get too quiet, hard to be heard over you know what's going on in the lower sections of the piano. And then likewise, it's also very easy for them to be far too loud, far too shrill. So you want to make sure that you know you're not going to play notes up here very often, but when you do, you want them to just have a really beautiful sound that blends well with the rest of the piano. Now, another very important aspect of the piano sound is going to be see these metal bars here. Uh, these break the hammers into different sections. Um, we call them breaks. And basically what we're looking for is a certain uniformity of sound throughout the piano. Um, so as you play the piano itself, uh, you, know, you wanna kind of observe where the different breaks are at um, and find the notes that correspond. And you wanna listen for are there any major differences between your sounds and that might not always be a bad thing, but the question is, well, how much do you like this? Um, and, you know, piano stores will do preparation and voicing to the instrument. Um, and if you have any notes on the different breaks and how they're interacting, if there's like a big color difference, let's say at this break over here in the low bass um, into the upper bass region, then, you know, you can, you can make sure the piano store knows uh, your thoughts on that and they will let you know what they can do about that. Um, most of the time if it's pretty close they can get it sounding you know real nice and smooth. If there's you know very defined breaks in the instrument they can get it better but at the end of the day that might be kind of built into the instrument. Some people like that some people don't. Um, generally if you want to play a lot of music with a lot of different melodies happening at different parts of the piano, it can be a good thing to have different parts of the piano sounding pretty different. Um, but I'd say the majority of players want their piano to sound roughly the same in all the different regions, uh, at least like the same color character. Now this is an older rebuilt Steinway, so 
Um, with older instruments, there, I said there tends to be more of a difference between the different breaks. Um, so if you're looking at more refurbished instruments, this is something you want to you know, pay pretty close attention to. Let's give it a try here. This is right before the break, then after the break. I can hear a bit of a difference. This is a little more mellow. This is a little more bright, but I'd say this is a very acceptable amount of difference and you know, it's not very noticeable um, and not detrimental. And we have this break over here. On this one, I heard really no difference. Um, and so that's, that's great, especially because this is our mid range and we want you know, our melodies that run generally from these two octaves to just sound, you know, like they're the same piano playing that, you know, melody. Then we have our bass break over here. Now I hear, again, a m bit more of a difference going on over here. Now this might not be the worst thing, um, you know, because the central, the central break here was where the majority of our instrument, uh, of our melodies are going to be played. And this whole section of the piano sounds very much the same. This, a slightly different character. But a lot of it goes into, well, how much do you like how each different section sounds, um, you know, how similar, how different. So this sounds a little bit different, but I wouldn't consider that to be a bad thing. We're mostly looking for, is it a very abrupt difference? Is it anything that if you're playing a melody and you're just running a scale up, is it going to be super noticeable, you know, that break difference? That's generally what you want to avoid. Now, some other things we want to look out for on any piano is sustain and note decay time. Um, and one of the big things about this, again, you want to look at it, you know, break it up into the three main sections of the piano. And I would just play single notes and, you know, without the damper pedal, listening for how long they sustain. And a good piano quality built should, you know, be able to sustain a nice sound. It shouldn't rapidly decay. Um, and you want to have a nice fullness of tone because there'll be plenty of times where you need to hold a note for a full measure, two measures, and if it decays very rapidly, you're just not going to be able to hear it. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to do with exactly how long it sustains. Um, really, it just shouldn't be rapidly uh, diminishing. It should be able to carry its sound for a nice good uh, amount of time. And essentially, you're just looking for you know, a piano that is capable of good sustain. Um, now, some players might you know, really want a very powerful sustain that lasts a long time. Uh, you know, others it might not be as big of a deal, but generally you're just looking for, am I, am I happy with the amount of sustain going on? Then the next part of this is also the attack, which is kind of related to brightness in general. Like a slower attack is usually associated with a more mellow, warm piano and a sharper attack more associated with, uh, with a bright piano. But the attack is how the note initiates, how it comes to life. Um, and it can be very sudden. It can kind of take, you know, and we're talking split second differences in time, um, but in how the note initializes. So on this piano. Kind of a moderate attack, I would say, on this piano, which generally matches the tone of the instrument. And that's the big thing that you want. You want the attack to match the tone. Um, this is somewhere in the middle between warm and bright. It has some characteristics of a bright piano and it has some mellow warmth to it as well. Um, so I would say this attack somewhat sharp, but um, you know, definitely the big thing is that it keeps in line with the character of the sound. Um, you don't want a warm piano that has a real sharp attack and vice versa. Now the next big uh, thing is going to be touch response. Um, the sense of touch of the piano is one of the most important parts, uh, you know, sound and touch. 
And generally we think of it as lightweight and firmer actions. And essentially the lighter the piano keys are, the easier it is to play faster. Um, it generally will be less frustrating, but when the keys are lighter, you have less control over the expression. Um, so that's the big trade-off. A firmer piano generally is easier to produce different kinds of sounds from the piano, um, just because you have more resistance, which means that there's just more possibilities on how to play each note, but it will be more difficult to play fast on a firmer piano. So that's always the big trade-off there. Um, so the big thing is finding a key weighting um, one, I would say that is fairly similar to other pianos, unless you're a very advanced player and you know exactly what you want. Um, a big thing is you don't want to be thrown by the difference in weighting of your piano versus other pianos that you're going to play on. Um, so you want something close to the middle ground, just usually nothing very extreme light or very extreme heavy. Um, so a piano like this... side of things and some nice things with the firmer piano as I said better sense of expression overall more options on how to you know play each different key but some drawbacks it is you know a little more sluggish a little more frustrating to play certain things especially quick ornaments are gonna be really hard like trills <laughs> tire you out a lot more and just generally be harder to control on a firmer piano. Um, but the big benefit is a firmer piano will train your fingers fast because there's just more resistance so it's going to develop those muscles in your fingers quicker. Um, but things to look out for as well is going to be different kinds of articulations. I would play staccato notes on the piano and with a firmer piano generally it's harder to get a very crisp staccato. is a very quick motion on the piano and with a heavier key a little bit harder to do um, the big thing is is this comfortable for you um, and another note on you know key weighting here um, a lot of times it's going to be dependent on pianos that you might have played in the past are going to give you a pretty strong bias towards a particular key feel and that's perfectly all right the big thing is that you get something that you know, is going to help train you become a better pianist. So you don't want something far too light or far too heavy unless you, you know, are an advanced player who knows exactly what you want. Um, so the big thing is getting something pretty similar to other sorts of pianos and that offers really nice, you know, control. As you're playing your contrasting pieces, really pay attention to how easy is it for me to bring out certain details in the music you know, if I want, you know, a slurred melody line, a legato melody line, you know, how easy is that to do? Um, try different things like playing crescendos. And generally going from the quietest dynamics that you can play all the way up to the highest dynamics that you can play. And really watch for, you know, does the piano help me? Does the piano make this easier or am I fighting the piano? You'll always want to find a piano that, you know, is kind of your musical assistant instead of, uh, you know, a piano that fights you along the way. So another note um, as well is the difference between uprights and grands. Um, generally, grands are going to be a bit firmer. Um, but I will say that this is not rock solid. I've played on you know, many very lightweight grands. I've played on many heavy uprights. Um, so there's this general perception, you know, uprights are you know, gonna be too light because I'm used to playing on a grand piano. Not true at all. Find an upright that has the weighting that you like if that's what you're looking for. Um, generally, you'll be able to find it. Um, there's a really large variation of key weightings so as long as you feel you have good expressive control over the instrument, um, if you feel that you'll be able to play clean, crisp on this instrument and it's not gonna be a frustrating experience, 
um, you know, then this piano might be something that will work for you. So now that you've uh, tried a lot of different pianos, tried a lot of different piano sounds, and experimented with pieces of different contrasting styles, tried the different regions of the piano and see how they interact with each other. Um, hopefully by now you've settled on a few favorites and essentially at this point, um, it's gonna be really playing those back to back and care carefully you know, deciding you know, which feels the most comfortable to play, which instrument resonates the best with me. Um, and then it's at this point that different factors are going to come into play. Um, things like price, budget, um, the age of the piano, um, different things like that could end up being the key deciding factors once you've found a couple of top choices that you really like. Um, but the big thing, of course, is going to be that the instrument really resonates with you, that you really enjoy playing it, that you can see yourself having this as your main instrument for quite some time. Um, and, you know, the nice thing is your piano is going to be your long-term musical companion and there's quite a bit that you can do to, you know, over the years customize the tone of the piano. Um, you can make slight changes to the weight of the piano keys. It tends to be fairly difficult to make any drastic changes to the piano keys without uh, you know, affecting the playability of the instrument. So it's very important for touch that you find something pretty, pretty close to exactly how you want it. You know, you can make slight tweaks, but again, wider tweaks can really, you know, affect the piano's playability. Um, and a lot of times it's not very practical to do. So you really want to find something that the touch is really, really close to how you like it. And the sound is exactly how you like it. Um, so at that point, then you're really looking at the other factors that go into things, um, the price, the general color, how well does it fit into your home? Um, and hopefully, you know, you find a piano that you're gonna be happy with for many decades to come. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video made it a little bit easier and make you feel more confident going into a piano store and finding the piano that's gonna work the best for you. Um, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Max with Family Piano Co. Uh, if you'd like to reach out with any questions, I'm always more than happy to help however I can. Uh, max at familypiano.com is my email address. Um, so thank you so much for watching and please uh, subscribe if you like our content. Thank you.